Hey guys, what is going on? Paragon here, and today we're going to have a look at my first impression of the first curse. So let's have a look at its perks to start off with. Now we have CQB Ballistics, Smooth Ballistics, and Soft Ballistics. Our free perk is Deadeye, giving us a bonus to range, stability, and movement speed while aiming down sights. We get Triple Tap. In our second tree, we have Quick Draw, Lightweight, and Speed Reload. Now, last perk, the first curse, precision kills while aiming down sights, grant increased range and stability until the next reload. So, I had really high expectations for this gun. Being the sister gun to The Last Word, those of you that know me, you know, I absolutely love that gun in Vanilla. It was my favorite gun. Even during the Suros and the Vex class era, when those guns were the big guns before hand cannons became king, I was a last word user, loved that gun, loved the way it looked, loved the way it played, and uh, you've got to love that little flick animation whenever you switch to the gun. It's just, I, I've, I found the detail, I really appreciated how much work Bungie put into that gun to make it look unique and feel unique. So the first curse, you'll notice its play style is completely different. This is much more of a mid-range, long-range weapon, and also rewards smart strafe shooting. So... All of the perks that we have are going to give us a bonus while moving, while aim down sight. So Deadeye, that first perk you have straight away, getting the extra range and stability and movement speed while aim down sights, you'll notice a big difference with what you can do. Similar to meter. So meter having that strafe gunplay, you have to play with a similar mindset with this gun. So that felt natural for me. Uh, one, of, one of the things I always focus on in all shooters, regardless of if it's Destiny or other games, is strafe shooting is a very, very important skill to have. So anything that enhances my ability to strafe shoot, when I used to play Call of Duty, I always loved picking up Stalker or any of the perks that made me move faster while aim down sights, because that's just how I prefer to outplay people in gunfights. I prefer to get out of the way and make sure I can still shoot them. But the bonus to stability and range are definitely very important. So hip firing this gun is not a good idea. It is not the greatest. Statistically, this gun does not look amazing. Impact wise, it's still a three shot kill if you get one headshot. So you get one headshot, the rest of your hits will have to land on either the body or the head to get a kill. So it's time to kill is nothing amazing. Uh, most of the other guns, and especially the pulse rifle meta at the moment, the pulse rifles will outshoot you, and especially with that flinch as well, you're going to have, an, have, have a hard time outgunning the guys with the pulse rifles. But this gun really gave me some interesting options with how I play fights. So, obviously, like I said before, the strafe shooting is very important, and why I ran lightweight is to sort of accentuate that and give me even a bigger advantage while strafing. So if you're using this gun in mid to long range, you can win your engagements and you can get some really nice outplays, especially when you have the first curse up. Having extra range and stability until the next reload uh, really does help this gun a lot because you'll see while I'm shooting, it does kick a ton. It is very, very hard to stay on target with this weapon. It's got nice clear iron sights uh, it looks very familiar to the last word, so something that was well, actually the same skin with a couple of different colors on it. But uh, it felt very familiar for me with the aim down sights. But again, with the recent nerf in the 2.0 patch release just before Taken King, hand cannons sort of got gimped. They lost their range, uh, they're harder to land their hits now, and sometimes it doesn't always feel like the bullets are going where you aim. So I don't feel that's necessarily a first curse issue. I feel that's more that hand cannons got nerfed way too hard just because two of them were too strong for the game and were overperforming. So that's something that I guess if Bungie feels needs to be addressed, they will. But uh, looking at the triple tap perk as well, it's very, very helpful ke for keeping that first curse buff up because this gun rewards precision play. And uh, as you would have seen in my No Time to Explain video, I really appreciate perks that force you to play well or they reward skilled play. Not things like Yalahorn, which uh, as fun as Yalahorn was, it was just point and shoot and destroy the whole map. I like the fact that this gun rewards you for landing precision hits and focusing on being accurate because accuracy is very, very important. And uh, a lot of people tend to, you know, pick guns that they can just spray and shoot, and, and that's great, but developing your accuracy is very important. And I find this gun helps encourage you to play accurate, place your shots. You've only got eight rounds in the magazine, and you have a very slow reload time. So triple tap, you want to try and maximize that and keep that first curse buff up. So 
this gun is not going to be one of the top tiers. I was really, really hoping that it would be good, but if we were looking at a hand cannon to pick instead, Hawkmoon outclasses it in every way. Hawkmoon does have that elusive two-shot kill. It's uh, got better stats, slightly less impact, but it's still a three-shot with one headshot. So in almost every situation, Hawkmoon outdoes the first curse. So a little bit disappointing there, but if we look at the gun as a whole, it's actually a lot of fun. And uh, having that extra movement while strafing can help you outplay your opponents. So if you were a big fan of meter, uh, you're not going to get the same kill time as meter does, but you are going to get that similar gunplay of out-strafing, out-maneuvering your opponents in the middle of the gunfight. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. But for me, my final verdict is going to be a 6 out of 10. So this gun has some really cool perks, some cool features, but I don't think it brings enough to the table to compete with the current meta in Destiny. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and be sure to tune in for more Destiny content. See ya!